Hello friends, it's me, Tony, and you're watching me. It's Today in Nerd History. Today in Nerd History! The landscape of video game movies has been a fetid garbage dump for over 20 years. Video game movies consistently missed the point of what fundamentally made these games great, and if not, they changed the core characters and the aesthetics that drew people in to begin with. And because of this, it's really easy to dismiss video game movies in their entirety. But sometimes if you go mining, you'll find a nugget of gold inside Turd Mountain. Here are the five best things in the five worst video game movies. The Thwomp Stomper Boots from Super Mario Brothers. Super Mario Brothers is a bad movie. Infamously bad. They knew how bad it was while they were making it. The cast had to get drunk on set every day just to cope with being in the movie. A sloshed John Linguizamo crashed a truck and broke Bob Hoskins' hand. This explains both why Bob Hoskins is wearing a cast suddenly in half of the scenes, and why in the years following he consistently referred to the movie as the worst job he has ever done. But between the industrial fungus wastelands, the dinosaurs looking way too real, and Mojo Nixon as Toad, there were the jump boots. While much of Mario's distinct iconography was either perverted or jettisoned altogether, the bizarre interpretation of Mario's jumping mechanic is almost poetic. How does Mario jump to dizzying heights and land with turtle eviscerating force? The answer is steel toad empowerment footwear. And I'd like to think that they were an inspiration for some footwear in a more recent popular game series. The crowd reactions in Ace Attorney. A very, very, very literal adaptation of the first Phoenix Wright game. This movie has a lot of good moments, but they're spread so paper thin across two hours that it's basically an endurance test of the human soul to sit through the whole thing without getting bored. One of the smartest choices the director had was to make the anime eccentricities just butt up against the courtroom drama with the same abrupt force that the game had. The film does such a faithful job of adhering to the beats of the game, which was meant to be picked up and put down in an episodic fashion, that it just goes on way too long. But it's a fun story when it casually just shifts into cartoon land. The first person shooter scene in Doom. The year was 2005. Dwayne Johnson still had to be credited as The Rock, America was still riding high on the real estate bubble, and a movie version of Doom was released for literally no discernible reason. What's disappointing about this film is it doesn't have enough heavy metal mayhem to be based on Doom 1 or 2, and it doesn't have enough mood and gloom to be based on Doom 3. The film skirted around the idea of demons from hell and instead centered on a genetic experiment gone wrong, which is like the film equivalent of the color beige shrugging. But the silver lining on this middling shit cloud was the movie's first person sequence. In the pre GoPro era, planning and shooting this sequence was a humongous technological feat. While a lot of this sequence has all the weight of a Coney Island Funhouse dark ride, a lot of it is actually really cool. It's like a really great concept video that you'd see on YouTube today, which is funny because YouTube is really the only recommendable way to watch this. The Goro effects in Mortal Kombat. For a very long time, Mortal Kombat was the dazzling success story of the game to movie adaptation world. Though we now laugh at the Pan-Asian weirdness and the beguiling performance of Christopher Lambert as a French god of thunder, one aspect of the production still stands out and is fascinating, the four-armed monstrosity known as Goro. In 1994, the sun was beginning to set on the practical effects industry. Jurassic Park had come out and proved that CGI was the future of filmmaking, but it wasn't quite there for films without a Spielberg-sized budget. The digital effects in this movie are crude and amateurish, but every time that Goro's on screen, you're seeing animatronics, makeup, and stop-motion animation coming together at the height of their craft. Decades of expertise brought together to bring moments like this to life. <laughs> NetherRealm Studios recently reclaimed the head of Goro from a property auction for about 1800 bucks, and now sits proudly in their offices to remind visitors of its nut-crushing glory. Raul Julia as M. Bison in Street Fight. True story, as a goof, I once got the Street Fighter DVD to watch with a friend, and it broke his DVD player. The DVD player elected death over showing us this toxic sludge of a movie. But I have seen it, and I'm glad that I have. And all because of this guy. In a world of cryptic, brooding antagonists, <coughs> Cumberbatch, <coughs> Raul Julia's M. Bison is the megalomaniacal supervillain that all other actors dream of being. The day Bison graced your village, was the most important day of your life. But for me, it was Tuesday. This isn't overacting and this isn't hamming it up. This is pure evil bliss just dripping out of every line of dialogue. In the years since Raul Julia's death, the respect he gets for this role has just kept growing. Every jaded gamer or bored college student who gets stoned to watch this movie walks away thinking, wow, that was a piece of crap, but that guy was amazing. 
Bonus, this one moment from In the Name of the King, A Dungeon's Each Tale. Can I have some chicken, please? Don't give it to him. Give me the chicken. <laughs> arr, arr, arr. Okay, guys, uh, tweet me at Helpful Tony or leave a message in the comments below. Let me know if there are any bad movies with great parts that you like, and we could dream of a world where movies were all good parts and no bad parts. But it's only a dream.